Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Beautiful Things. I am your host, Jocelyn. Uh, Beautiful Things is a DIY show that is created to inspire you to, to recreate, renovate, refresh your living space. Um, you know, if you're anything like me, you love luxe. I love luxury. However, luxury can also be done on a budget. And it is my hope that this show will help you get your creative juices flowing so that you can begin to go throughout your home and change that space so you can feel uh, revived and renewed as you walk along the place where you lay your head. I'd like to share some fun facts about uh, the first space that I decided to renovate in my home. Uh, a couple, when I was living in Atlanta, decided to get married and they needed to consolidate. So I was able to purchase this furniture for $250 and I have had it for 20 years. I love the pieces. I thought it was gorgeous, beautiful. However, I wanted to see something different in my home. And you may ask, like, why have you kept this furniture for 20 years? Um, I'm the person that believes that it's not how much you make, but it is how much you keep. And so with that in mind, it is one of the reasons why I have kept this furniture for so long. But it's also another reason is that I have gifted this furniture to my daughter. And so when she decides to get her own living space or her own home, uh, this furniture will go with her. But until that time, I needed to see something different in my home. And so I decided uh, to uh, come up with some creative ideas and get my creative juices flowing. And what you see behind you is actually what has manifested from those thoughts and imaginations. Other reason that some of this furniture is uh, very dear to me, I believe in passing down things. What I want to do for my family is to begin to do some sentimental things that will uh, go throughout generation that my daughter can pass to her children and my son can pass to his children and then they'll pass it on down. And that's kind of a way I can keep living. You know, they can say, you know, grandmother bought this, or grandmother had this, or I got this from my grandmother. You know, a lot of us started out in life with pulling ourselves up by the bootstrap. Um, but I didn't want that to be the story of my children. I want them to stand on my shoulders. And so one of the ways that I wanted to do that is to gift to them furniture so that they don't have to go out and purchase. Um, but also it's very sentimental uh, and it is a tradition that we will pass down uh, from generation to generation. Another part uh, in this uh, living space in my dining room is some chairs that my sister, who is no longer with us, uh, give, gave to me. She was changing out her uh, home and she called me up and said, hey, do you want these chairs? And and they didn't go with anything that I had, but I um, said, okay, yeah, you know, give them to me. And I am beyond uh, grateful that I made that decision uh, because now I have something that belongs to her and I can pass it on to my daughter. The two of them had a, a very close uh, relationship. She was actually like a second mother to her. So I'm excited to be able to do that uh, for her. So that's uh, some brief, quick facts about uh, this room that we're going to see transformed from one thing to another. So let's get started started. What you'll find is as I'm going through recreating each piece by piece, um, I will do some narrations and then sometimes I'll just be quiet and allow you to see what uh, I am doing. Again, it is my hope that this will inspire you, you know, to uh, get up and begin to do some things in your own home to change what you see daily, to get a new leash on life, a new outlook. You know, it's nothing like uh, having something new to refresh you and give you that boost to uh, do some new things, uh, to, uh, to feel hope, uh, to uh, be encouraged. And so as we move forward, uh, going through one piece by piece, I want to show you that there is absolutely nothing in your home that you cannot transform and with something just as simple as paint. So let's get started. If you want to know how I went from this to this, Stay tuned. So originally, this buffet was a tannish color. As you can see the top of the countertop uh, with the little chip that has to be replaced. That the basic color of the buffet was around that color or the color of the wall. And so what I did, I've already gone ahead and began to paint this in this dark charcoal gray. And it's a bear color, if you're interested. I got it from my local Home Depot store, and it is called Dark Secret. And that's me trying to explain to you um, exactly that I had gone ahead and colored 
or painted this buffet gray. Um, one of the things I wanted to do, I, this gray did not set in with me well. I actually started with the white and then I was like, no, that's not working. So I put the gray on there and um, I love the gray, but I wanted it not to be as dark. So what I did was I took uh, some paint and there was a paint, it's a bare paint as well, it's called Drizzle. And what I did, I mixed it with um, a light gray. So it was a white with a light gray that I mixed. And I decided that I wanted to kind of just do, um, I wanted an antique-ish kind of look. So I took some uh, dry strokes uh, across it with the Drizzle. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, in doing that, uh, it was very important as you saw me dab the water. I uh, sprayed my brush to give it, make it sure it was a little damp. And then you only put just a small amount of paint on there because it doesn't take a lot of paint at all. If you put too much on it, the what I found is that that white will come through uh, more than what I was looking for. You may look, you may want that look, but for me, I was just trying to kind of tint it a little bit to give it that antiqueish look. Um, and as I go through, what you'll see is there's always a way to just change it up. Um, if you make a mistake, you just wipe it off and start from scratch. Um, so it's very important that if that's the, this is the look that you're going for, that you only put a small amount, I mean a very small amount of paint on there. If not, you will get what you just see here, how, how um, white, how prevalent the white is. And it looks like on my brush, I only have a, a small amount, but unfortunately it was more than what I needed. And so what I'm trying to do here is just uh, spread it out uh, to no avail. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to work that paint through. And what I will initially uh, end up doing is just going back to the drawing board, um, spraying the water, taking some uh, napkin and just uh, kind of spreading it out and um, and just keep on going to get the effect that I want. What I love about painting is that um, you can always correct to your mistakes um, if you catch it in time. Uh, yeah, so that, that's important as well. You don't want it to dry and then uh, decide that you know, it's not working. And if that does happen, you can always just paint over it and start over again. And so as you see here, I am continually, unfortunately, putting a little more, uh, more of that drizzle than I want seen because I don't want it to be um, so prevalent in there. I just want that light kind of antique-ish gray effect or look on this buffet. And so I'm just uh, constantly just continuing to uh, use those light strokes. And it's important how you do your strokes to make sure that you're doing the same thing throughout um, your piece. Because if not, it will give it a different look in those spots. So to make sure that it's congruent, that it's uh, consistent, make sure that you're kind of giving it the same um, pressure points when you're applying your paint to your canvas. So as I mentioned earlier, I've had this buffet since 20, 2000, actually. So that's 20 years ago. Um, and I love the buffet. It's, it's pretty. Um, I love the uniqueness of it. And I just wanted to not get rid of it. Um, for one, I told my daughter that I was going to give it to her. But while I wait on that to be passed down, I wanted to do something different in my house. So I said, hey, why not? Let's, let's paint it. And um, also, it's it's a little time consuming. Um, I kind of did it in phases. I think more so my time consum consumption was basically really trying to figure out 
what I wanted. How how did I actually want this to look? And so it took some mind space and some time for me to kind of figure out and come up with the concept that I wanted because I didn't see it anywhere. It's just this just came out of um, trial and error and me wanting to um, to do something different and to um, kind of get out what I was seeing on the inside of my mind. So I love how it turned out. I'm excited for you to see um, the results of it. So I'm just going to sit back and just let you watch as I just go through there and paint the side of the buffet. So I've basically completed this side for the most part. Um, again, love, love, love the outcome of what I'm seeing. And I'm going to uh, kind of pull that up so you can see uh, the dynamic effect of what that dribble paint did to um, the buffet. And this is a close up of it. Love it. Absolutely love it. And you can see from around the corner the difference in what has been done with the drizzle paint and the initial uh, just all over gray of the buffet. Yep, there it is. Total difference. So a little paint can do some amazing things. Uh, and hopefully that gets your creative juices flowing about some things that you can do in your own home. Now, this is day two of working with the buffet, and what you see is I love the outcome. I loved uh, the dry brushing of it. I love the antiquish look of it, but I wanted to take it up another notch. So I said, let me try stenciling and see how that looks on there. And when I did the first one, I was uh, not so sure, and I added another um stencil to the other side of it and as I continue to kind of add stenciling in I loved the effect I love the outcome and so what you see me do now is going through and finishing um, the other doors of the buffet and as I'm stenciling you will see that I take my um, water and spread it a little bit on a napkin to wipe off the sides of the uh, stencil once I take it off because it uh, got on uh, outside of what I needed and so I'm going to make sure that that gets off of there before it dries. Also when you're stenciling you want to make sure if you're doing it right behind each other you want to make sure that the stencil is dry of the paint because if not when you as soon as you put it on the door or whatever you're painting that paint is going to go ahead and smear on there. So you want to make sure that you use a napkin or something to dry that paint off to make sure that um, when you put it on there, you are not uh, taking more paint and just smearing it onto your, your item. And as mentioned earlier, this stenciling, I really, really love it. It really added another layer of beautifulness to if that's a word, to uh, this buffet. And I'm excited about the outcome. I love what I'm seeing. I love um, how it's looking. And so when I started doing the, doing the door, um, I wanted to see exactly if I added a little more at the top of the buffet, how would that look? And so I tried it and it worked out very nicely. And so I continued it throughout. Um, and, and don't be afraid to try things because you can always just go back behind yourself and just repaint it over. So if that didn't work for me, what I would have done is painted it with the charcoal gray, the dark secret, and then, you know, redid it with the drizzle to give it that effect and just moved on. So and that's what I love about uh, painting. You can just try different things and it may set you back a little bit time wise, but um, it's worth it because you get a chance to venture out to see uh, what could happen or how something could look. Uh, and sometimes what you see in your mind, it works 
uh, sometimes in it's better in theory than it is uh, actually in 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 real uh, life and so like I said with paint the great thing about it is you can go back to the drawing board start over and um, find something different to do with it I actually got my stencils from, there's a couple of places, uh, Hobby Lobby and Michaels. So you can go there or you can look online and you may find something different that you want uh, to work with. Uh, these stencils I had for a minute so I didn't have to go out and repurchase anything. I just used what I already had and it worked out very well for me. And what I loved about this as well, it wasn't as time consuming to do these stencils, although it seems like seemed like it is. Um, it really was. It didn't take a, a lot of time at all, which was a great help. And so now there you have it. I finished um, the stenciling of the buffet and I love it. I absolutely love it. I got paint on my hand. That's what happens when you don't use gloves. Um, and that's me kind of explaining exactly what I did there. And here what I'm doing is it's important that you seal your piece so that the paint will remain and stay and endure. And so what I'm using here is a clear polyurethane water-based um, sealant to make sure that the paint doesn't chip away or that it's not removed but it remains so and you just it's it's just a clear paint and you just kind of put it on as um, as needed for the most part but you want to make sure you get really good coverage of it and you can do it more than one time there's also uh, with this sealant, you if you if I wanted to tint it another color, um, you have that option as well in those sealants. So you can find those as well at your local Home Depot store. And what you may notice that you did not get the opportunity to see, but I explained it on another video when I did my table, is that I actually painted the countertop. If you can see, it's no longer that tannish color um, that was kind of similar to the wall. It is now in drizzle. I painted uh, the marble countertop with drizzle. And I liked it, you know, but then I, me and my creativity, I said, I wonder what it would look if I added I uh, did something different so what I did was I took the dark secret and I just kind of went across lightly uh, with brush stroke brush strokes um, across it and I gave it almost the same effect as it was when it was marble and I love that outcome and it's so beautiful to me and you'll get a chance to see it uh, better on my table I don't think I did an up close shot on this particular piece but you can kind of see it on the edge, that little black little uh, stroke that I did there. And I just did it all across the entire top, marble top, until I loved what I saw. And then I stopped. So if you're wondering, like, how did that happen? That's exactly what I did. I painted it, that drizzle, so it was white. And then I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I decided to add something else to it.
And now what I'm doing is just going throughout the remainder of the buffet and <clears throat> putting the sealant on it. Um, and you can see the difference there as I am painting it. It's giving it a very nice gloss. It's highlighting the paint a little more, giving it a better effect of, of, of what has been done. And for the most part, for me, the most important thing is that it is making sure that the paint stays on. Simply beautiful. Thanks again for tuning in to the first episode of Beautiful Things. I look forward to seeing you next week uh, with episode two of Beautiful Things as I transform the chairs that I told you about that my sister gave me into something very refreshing and beautiful. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.